LiveLeak is easily one of the most famous websites to grace the internet, and yet it has been completely wiped out. Its red and white logo invites comparison to YouTube, but of course it set itself apart with some major differences in regards to the content it hosted. Its tagline, Redefining the Media, encompassed the unique aspects of LiveLeak that reflected an earlier version of the internet. Very little moderation, to the point where ultra-violence was broadcast on the regular. As soon as you saw a video with that LiveLeak watermark on it, you knew you were in for a hell of a time. And, as such, it brought up one of the big questions regarding content on the internet. How far should we go with moderation? And in the interest of free speech, what kind of moderation should be implemented? This is because some of LiveLeak's content wasn't violence. Some of it was honest-to-goodness citizen journalism, and that was kind of cool as it really did redefine the media when it came to reporting. The whole idea was that you could see things that you couldn't see anywhere else, uploaded by real people and unfiltered by news corporations, and that made it special. Of course, the issue is that the word LiveLeak became synonymous with extremely graphic videos of the worst of what humanity had to offer which ultimately crippled its ability to exist alongside advertising standards. Eventually, it would be shut down in 2021, heralding the end of an era. So let's take a look at the rise and fall of one of the most interesting domains to be hosted online. LiveLeak was created in 2006 by a British team who previously created Ogreish.com, another site positioning itself as alternative news with the tagline Uncover Reality, although prior to that branding it was basically just a shock site aimed at hosting gore and destruction. The Ogreish.com URL would eventually only link to LiveLeak, as its creators clearly had a specifically less intense direction in mind with LiveLeak for hosting their intense content. The site wouldn't receive mainstream recognition until late 2006 when it hosted a mobile phone recording of Saddam Hussein's execution, garnering mass international attention. Then, British Prime Minister Tony Blair famously discussed the site in 2007, noting, War is no longer something read in dispatches, it comes straight into the living room. Take a website like LiveLeak, which has become popular with soldiers from both sides of the divide in both Afghanistan and Iraq. Operational documentary material from their mobile phones or laptops is posted on the site in real time. Naturally, this brought millions of views to LiveLeak as a sort of morbid curiosity pushed audiences towards the area of the internet where they could see this insane stuff. In response to questioning regarding the site, co-founder Hayden Hewitt asserted, of course it's horrible. It's not about me morally defending anything here. We have to take a stance of saying, look, all this is happening, this is real life, and this is going on, and we're going to have to show it. LiveLeak existed in a time where in many other platforms, such as the likes of YouTube, would assert their hands-off stance towards the videos posted on their sites, claiming it was not their place to decide whether something should stay up or not, aside from gratuitous violence and pornography, something that LiveLeak set itself apart with by allowing. As the years passed, LiveLeak went from strength to strength, gaining a reputation for controversies and public interest. However, this honeymoon period would soon come to an end, not with a bang, but with a resigned and perhaps dignified bow into the dark. As times changed, and as social media giants discovered much of the extreme content posted on their sites was posted in pushes by terrorist groups, and were getting to the point where this content was actually radicalizing those who saw it, LiveLeak came under fire from all sides. After all, people quickly realized coordinated propaganda could be posted and hosted on a mass scale, and this ended up being super dangerous, as LiveLeak began entering a post-truth world. Suddenly, the content hosted on the site wasn't always properly reflective of reality. Notably, people were becoming radicalized by ISIS execution videos, a fact that led to LiveLeak officially banning these videos in 2014 after the site became a favorite spot for people to post such content. Of course, if you grew up with unchecked access to the internet anywhere between the early 2000s to mid-2010s, there is a very, very high chance you have watched one of these types of videos, a fact that worked against LiveLeak as news stories of kids standing up in class and announcing their love for terrorist organizations began popping up. It's a pretty bizarre consequence of unfettered online access, but as the internet has matured, there seems to be a better understanding of the consequences of allowing anyone to post anything completely unmoderated, despite the utopic vision one might hold of this idea. In a statement released regarding the inevitable shutting down of LiveLeak in 2021, Hewitt seems to back this idea up, noting that the world has changed a lot over the last few years, the internet alongside it, and we as people. Despite all its flaws, the destruction of LiveLeak feels like a travesty. There's almost no way of getting this once great archive of insane content back, as it's all been wiped clean from the earth. This fact demonstrates the importance of archival resources like the Wayback Machine, a site dedicated to preserving snapshots of online spaces since 1996. You can use it to access previous iterations of LiveLeak too. Now that LiveLeak.com is shut down, its URL leads users toward ItemFix, another video sharing website geared at content editing, although it clearly hasn't garnered the recognition of its predecessors. ItemFix has also banned excessive violence or gory content, so it appears to be another social media platform headed in a more advertiser-friendly direction, and that's okay. 
Perhaps the best part of all of this is one quote from Hayden Hewitt sticking out when discussing Live Leak's end. Back in 2006, if you'd have told me that I'd still be doing it in 15 years, I'd have thought you were insane, because I didn't think that was sustainable. As such, the team has clearly decided their project has run its course, just as Ogrish.com did before Live Leak, and for that they deserve the ultimate respect as they chose to acknowledge their site's unsustainability instead of flogging it and themselves into the ground. See you next time on Lessons in Internet Culture.